Inside this video right here, I'm gonna talk about CHF versus pneumonia. They can look similar, let's talk about it. It is Paramedic Coach here, back with a brand new video talking about CHF versus pneumonia. Make sure to hit that like button down below. Somebody out there hit that like button for you to see this video right now to help you out. So do the favor back to them, hit the like button, and also hit subscribe if you're new here. If you've been here for a while, come on now, hit subscribe. Let's dive into it. So first we talk about CHF. Now, CHF stands for congestive heart failure, okay? Now when I think of the word congestive, well, you think too much, right? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is, that, well, I have too much fluid in my lungs. That's how I remember it, okay? And the heart failure, well, the heart is failing as a pump, okay? The reason why we talk about CHF versus pneumonia is they can both have rails, right? Early onset pneumonia can have rails, and then CHF can have rails too. So how do we differentiate, right? And we're gonna talk about that right now, okay? So you have a patient, difficulty breathing. Do you hear rails? Is it pneumonia or CHF? Here are the big pearls, we're talking about exam or in the field with CHF. The first is CHF will be coughing up pink frothy sputum. Why? Because they're coughing up blood tinge. They're coughing up blood. There's blood in the airways. Okay, so when the heart fails as a pump, right, blood backs up into that pulmonary system, and what, what, ends, what ends up happening? You're basically drowning in your own fluid. That is called, right here, pulmonary edema, okay? Now, we just talked about CHF has rails bilaterally. Now, would CHF ever not have rails bilaterally? If it's pulmonary edema and you have an acute CHF patient with difficulty breathing, they will have rails bilaterally. That is what they'll have. Not on one side, we'll talk about that later. That's pneumonia, could be pneumonia. Double sided rails, think CHF more often. Now, JVD, why is that? Again, when the heart fails as a pump, blood backs up in the system. You see, you got to understand heart blood flow to understand this, right? But if you understand that heart blood flow, I have videos on that. I'll put a link uh, somewhere on this page of heart blood flow. If you understand that, when blood backs up in the system, it backs up in the venous too. And that's how you get JVD, okay? Jugular vein distension, okay? Now the final piece here is you got to understand the heart has failed as a pump in CHF. Now, now what does that mean? Well, the whole goal of the heart is to pump oxygen-rich blood throughout the body. So if the heart fails to pump, then we ultimately, if we do nothing to a CHF patient, we just were to do nothing to them and just watch them, okay? And monitor them and do no, no skills. Eventually, they're gonna go into cardiogenic shock and they're going to be hypotensive in the longer term of our care. In the beginning of the care, we gotta think about CHF, a big cause could be volume overload, which is why they have pulmonary edema, fluids going where it doesn't need to be. So initially, a CHF patient will be hypertensive, JVD, rails, because they have pulmonary edema, which is pulmonary of the lungs, edema, fluid in the lungs, and they're coughing up pink frothy sputum because there's blood in their lungs. Okay. Later on, as they transform into cardiogenic shock, they'll be hypotensive. We don't want to get them to that place, so we got to treat them early. Now, talking about pneumonia, the biggest first key difference is green and yellow sputum tells us there's some sort of infection pathway. Remember that. So, someone with a productive cough, green or yellow sputum, think pneumonia, infection pathway. Okay. Now, here's the big thing with the lung sounds. Pneumonia starts off with rails early onset. Now again, this is not a rule, but I'm gonna give you just a general idea here, okay? It's not a rule, an idea. If you see 10 patients that have pneumonia, I would say, this is my opinion, about eight 
or maybe even nine of them are going to have rails on one side and they're going to have ammonia on one side. Now, one or two of them may have double lung bilateral pneumonia. It is not impossible. It's very possible, which is why we talk about CHF versus pneumonia. They both have rails bilaterally. How do we differentiate? Right here. Okay. So it's usually on one side more often. Now, as pneumonia goes on for a few days, it will turn into ronchi, a ronchi sound that you'll hear, a different lung sound, okay? Could be on one side or the other. Now, the biggest difference is we talk about hot skin, dry skin, talk about fever, right? This all can happen. So think about it. your infectious patient could also be severely dehydrated as well right, due to the infection pathway. So skin conditions are probably going to be hot, right, and also they're going to have a fever, exactly, okay. So that's something that we want to think about. Now the last piece here is, I just want to mention this, anytime we have an infection in the body, three main things can happen. If someone is a diabetic, their blood glucose will go up, okay. Second piece, they will become tachycardic 100% with an infection pathway. If they have pneumonia, they will be hypoxic on room air. So if you have a diabetic patient with pneumonia, remember that as well with the blood sugar pearl. Okay, Everybody will have this when we're talking about pneumonia. The last final piece is you want to ask about any sort of recent illnesses, right? Have you seen a doctor recently? Have they been diagnosed with anything? It might clue you in on this. Hey, awesome job watching this video learning about CHF versus pneumonia. I want to let you know that I've actually created an entire video vault, an entire video study course devoted to EMS education, all the way from EMT, advanced EMT, and the paramedic level, and includes NREMT National Registry Prep. You can see on the screen here, the first link in the description, it's a video vault of over 400 videos plus our private paramedic coach community. And just for watching this video, I will give you a lifetime access to the course. First link in the description down below. My friends, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you on the next one. Take care. Don't waste, don't waste any time. Don't, don't be hesitant and just do it because I know this program works. And I know it's, it got me to where I was, where it's been a year without school from EMT to, hey, I passed my test in 70 questions, like, go for it, you could do it. Like, do not hesitate and don't waste any time. People that don't know you, they need to, they need this program. This program is not a, a choice. To me, this program is a have to. Take uh, uh, thousands and thousands of pages in the books and you just narrow it down and just make everything simple I pass the registry. So uh, it's, it's, it's great content, man. I promise you it's worth it took this with three weeks left to go in my class and I just I'm not sure if I would have been able to pass my course or the NREMT first try without this course. The fact like when I was taking the, the national and I would read the question and I, I would be like whoa Evan literally just went over this in the car so it's it really it helps. I got to the point where I was just ready to spill all my knowledge onto this freaking test so I'm like you know what man just go ahead go for it open it up Boom, congratulations, you passed. It was um, outside of having my children, man, it's probably the, more like the happiest day of my life, bro, to be honest with you.